All right, so I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like it's been a long time since I actually got excited to build a PC. I think mainly because there's been so much new hardware that's come out very recently that I was just kind of waiting for all of it to release before I actually started building more seriously again. I mean, first we had Ampere, which kind of launched, not really, but uh, you know, at least I have a couple cards on hand. I'm fortunate enough about that. And then we had uh, Zen 3, which just launched very recently. At the time of filming, actually, it has it's, it's launching tomorrow as I'm filming this. Uh, but by the time you see it, obviously, it'll it'll already be here. And then we've got the Radeon RX 6000 series right around the corner, which I don't even have a sample of one of those cards yet. I'm probably going to at some point. Watch my review if you haven't yet on that, which I haven't made yet. But um, that is uh, is definitely going to get used in the build at some point too, along with Zen 3. So right after right after Ampere launch, I was a little I was still hesitant to put together a, a sweet PC because I was still holding out for Zen 3. It just I don't know. I, I'm too entitled of a tech YouTuber to be like oh let's just pair an RTX 3080 with a Ryzen 3000 series CPU. <laughs> oh, oh God. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty privileged. I understand that. But now that Zen 3 is here, I'm actually really excited to finally pair a brand new CPU and GPU together for the first time in a long time. So this is probably going to be uh, the freshest build that I've put together in 2020 so far. And I'm pretty excited. On top of that, we also have a, a new case from Fractal. Fractal Design. Well, I say new case, but it's, it's kind of, so it's the Meshify 2. It's more a, a Define 7 than anything else. Like you'll see when we take a look at the internal layout, it's pretty much Define 7 up and down, but it's just got the uh, Meshify front panel with uh, the mesh, obviously, for, for better airflow and performance. And uh, yeah, it's it's a big boy case. This is not the same Meshify, original Meshify that uh, that you know. But we're going to take a look at the ins and outs of this case as we're going about the build as well. And I'm going to introduce the rest of the hardware as we progress the build. So I'm just going to start. And um, I guess the first thing I should mention is the CPU that we're using. This is the AMD Ryzen 7 5800X. Boom. Today's video is brought to you by Slick Deals and their super awesome browser extension. Not only is the extension completely free, guys, but it automatically finds you the best deals on your favorite retail sites to save you the most money possible. And all the deals that it shows you are actually curated by the Slick Deals community, so you only see offers that have been upvoted by other shoppers like you. You go to a retailer's website, click the Slick Deals icon, and bam, you're in Deal City. Population deals. I didn't really know what to expect the very first time I used it, but literally within seconds, I was finding all kinds of offers. Like there was a B550 motherboard for 30% off or something like that, where I was like, I, okay, I don't need that, but that's a really good deal. The extension also finds you any site related coupons you otherwise might not have seen. And it lets you create deal alerts with email and mobile push notifications. I mean, with Black Friday and the holidays right around the corner, this is like the perfect tool to catch all the deals without doing any of the legwork. About 20 million people will be using Slick Deals to help them save money while shopping. So again, it's completely free and saves you money on stuff like computer hardware. Need I continue? If you like saving money, which is a dumb thing to say because who doesn't, click on the link in the description below to start using the Slick Deals browser extension today. I kind of wanted to use the 5900X because I do have a sample of that too. You should watch our review if you haven't yet. But I, I also wanted to make this an RTX 3070 build. And I just feel like the eight core 16 thread is, is better suited for an RTX 3070. If we were using a 3090 or a 3080, then I would definitely be using the 5900X. But there's plenty of other opportunities in the future to uh, to use that chip in a build. So this is eight core 16 threads and it uh, boosts to 4.7 gigahertz. And I, I, look at that, I haven't, even, I haven't even opened it yet. You guys, this is the only product today the only computer part I think that you'll actually see me unbox because I have everything else I have a bunch of other stuff just already unboxed I like to save time in the shooting process by unboxing everything before I start recording little behind the scenes fun fact all right and uh, no no cooler no wraith cooler with this one because it's uh, you know AMD is assuming that you're gonna add your own uh, third-party aftermarket cooler which of course we are so there it is 5800x still untainted by my disgusting fingertips until now. And we're gonna slot this inside of a, a very lovely motherboard from Asus. This is their ROG Strix B550E Gaming. Pretty attractive board here. And it's got these little pink accents that, you know, are, are either gonna bother you a lot or you won't care much. I feel like most of it gets covered up by the GPU anyway. It's right there on the chipset. And the rest of it, it's very, 
very discreet still, but I think we are gonna have some RGB in this system. I think I'm just gonna make all the RGB pink though to, to match the board, as, as subtle as it is. I, I haven't really done any pink related builds in a long time, I think since Hotline 2.0, but okay, sorry about that. I just confirmed that the cooler that we're using does in fact use the, uh, the stock mounting brackets here. So we can leave those on, perfect. CPU installation, continue. Bloop, bloop, bloop. All right. Oh, that's beautiful. So, so nice. All right, um, memory is next. We got four of these sticks. I thought that this was a 32 gig kit. It's actually 64 gigs. This is Corsair Dominator RGB. I think that's the full name. Their naming schemes confuse me these days, but uh, they're actually 16 gigabyte modules. So we have a 64 gig kit here, which again is a little overkill for the system that we're building, obviously. It's nice if you're doing things like video editing or really utilizing it, but we're only gonna use two of these sticks. And I'm sure, you know, it's obviously not recommended. You wanna use all the sticks that came with your kit uh, just for, just to ensure full performance and compatibility, but I, I don't care. I'm gonna do it my way. And sticks are installed just like that. Maybe I should have installed the cooler first. That's fine. It's an easy cooler to install. And it is the Fractal Design. I know we're going Fractal fanboy today. They're Celsius Plus S36. So this is the S36 360 millimeter model. I really like this AIO. It's just so simple. I mean, it's got that Scandinavian minimalism that, uh, that they're always so proud of. I like it too. I have used this cooler before. It's very nice, easy to install. So let, let me go ahead and get that on there. I can't do that one-handed. Be right back. Okay, that is complete. Water block installed. What are we missing? M.2, M.2 SSD. All right, uh, I don't I don't actually have a PCI Gen 4 drive on hand that's, uh, that's not in use right now with a different system, but I do have this nice SN550 from WD. Uh, so yeah, so just a, a one terabyte WD Blue SN550. Very nice, uh, very nice and reliable drive. Got really high marks on an Antec, and uh, I've been using this in other systems here and there, so this will be a nice, a nice little uh, boot drive for us for now. Um, let's go ahead and install it on the top M.2 slot of the board because this is wired directly to the PCIe lanes of the CPU. Ugh, I can always, I can never like tell when it's fully unscrewed. There's always a couple threads left that I, that I miss. All right, there we go. Okay, let's get him in. I don't even think I need it. It's just for, just don't, don't copy me in any of it. Don't ever do what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm just going to ignore it. Oh, you know what I should do though is take this off. Yeah, come on. Come on, come on, ah, ah. There we, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Anyone, uh, anyone wanna be a cameraman for the channel? I could probably use one of those. Come on, come on, just do it. All right, there you go, all right. Um, yeah, you know, technically you should, you should put the screw down just to keep it stable and stuff, but I'm, I'm lazy. Okay, let's talk about the case, shall we? Because we're pretty much ready for case installation. We're gonna start, well, actually we have to get the fans on the radiator first, which I, I might do in a time lapse or something because that's boring. Uh, so let's talk about this case. Okay, so Meshify 2, what's what's new about it? Well, well, it's, you know, we'll get to the inside when we get to it, but as far as the outside goes, we got a pretty straightforward front panel, mic and headphone jacks, USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C, nice clicky power button that is recessed as well as a uh, not so easy to press reset button, but that's what you want. You don't want to accidentally hit that. That, and then two USB 3.0 ports right there. So very straightforward IO. We also have a nice front mesh panel and it's different. It's a little bit different. So it's got these sort of like this indent that goes all the way around, sort of like a hollow bezel, you know, outside of the frame. And then there's also this uh, fractal logo, you know, new fra newish fractal logo. And it's sort of like a handle because it's popping out. And if you pull it, uh, uh, Oh, yeah, whoa. So first of all, you've got some mounting points here for fans. You can do up to a 360 millimeter radiator. You could also do a 280, of course. Does come included, this whole case comes included with uh, three 140 millimeter fans. They are X2 GP14s. And uh, the cool thing about this guy is that you can just pop it out like so. It detaches completely. And then from here, you've got two feet that hold it together while you film it. And if you pull up, oh. Uh, removable dust filter, yeah. So that's built in to the door and you can uh, essentially remove it without having to physically remove the, I guess the, the frame, the, the main frame of, of the front panel because it's still intact here. You can remove it. Let me just get rid of the uh, power supply dust filter first, which is full length, covers the full depth of the case. 
but you can take this frame off completely too. And it's uh, it's not tethered to anything. There's no wires connecting it to the case, so that's nice. But you don't really even have to remove this in order to do a lot of the things that you normally need to do, like clean the dust filter or install fans. Because you can see with this outer frame installed, you can still access all the fans, like all the fan screws are accessible and stuff. So that just makes your life a little bit easier. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside for now. The top panel is also fully removable. So you just yank it from the back. Aha, uh -huh. and uh, it does have does have mesh there. Oh, one thing I, I should mention. One thing I forgot to mention about the front panel is that you can, the, the manual, the actual user's manual suggests as an option that you can completely remove the dust filter here and just leave it, just leave it uninstalled if you want more airflow. Obviously that means you're probably gonna end up with more dust in your case, might have to clean it more often, but if you are really trying to maximize the uh, the amount of air that's going through this case, then um, they, do, they do suggest that you can remove this uh, 24 seven if you want. Back to this, top panel, just a nice mesh material here. Not super fine because this is the actual dust filter, which has the fine mesh and that. Okay, so I see. You just pull it here. I did read the manual, so I'm sort of, uh, these are educated guesses that I'm making. And then, uh, yeah, so dust filter right there. And then you can go a step further and actually take this whole piece off. You can completely, it's modular. Um, which is definitely new uh, to the Meshify series. Now, the side panels, you have to remove the side panel first in order to remove the top. And uh, this is completely toolless. There's just a little latch here. Pull it, comes right off. But if you're transporting this case or, you know, there's a system built in it and you just want to be extra careful, you can actually, okay, this is when you would actually need to remove this frame. Ugh, is to access uh, screw holes. There are some screw holes right right here, right at the top there, that little hole, that uh, you can actually take a, a screw, screw it in so that I'll, that'll secure the side panel to the case for extra security. All right, let's go ahead and pop this guy off, which is uh, tinted pretty well. Good old tint in there, so you're gonna wanna really get some bright lights in there if you wanna show it off. All right, I'm gonna put the side panel here. Huh? <laughs> and then you've got two screws. You've got one here and then another one there. Once you remove those, you should be able to remove this top panel completely. Let's do that. Do, 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 do. But uh, with those two screws gone, this should just come, oh yeah, it's super easy. It just lifts right off. So this is gonna make it a lot easier for you to install fans, radiators, all the above. And uh, it also just opens up the case completely, well, almost completely, once you have this side panel removed. Dun, 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 dun. I mean, that doesn't really do much for, for this side, but you can just see like how much more open it is to work in, which makes it easier. Uh, it just uh, is one less, you know, piece of frame in your way. You can really get in there and do your business. So uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty sweet. That's definitely a new feature to the Meshify. Let's uh, go ahead and install this radiator, shall we? Actually, you know what? Instead of mounting the radiator to the top of the case, I'm actually gonna mount it to the front and then we're gonna put some uh, additional fans uh, at the top and we're gonna replace that one at the back. So I actually have these Prisma RGB fans from Fractal. Three of them came included with the Celsius cooler. So those will go right there. And then uh, we've got two, I've got two more 140 millimeter versions, our models that, uh, that will go one at the top and one at the back. So I guess I can install one of these bad boys onto that guy. It's also worth mentioning that you can put up to a 420 millimeter radiator at the top of the case, which is pretty impressive. So you've got up to a 420, 360, and you can even do up to a 280 at the bottom. Not not too shabby. In terms of uh, custom water cooling support, uh, this thing definitely has it all. Also, this plate, uh, it does this case does include a multi-bracket, which right here, this multi-bracket, you can put two and a half inch, three and a half inch drives, or uh, water cooling pumps, reservoirs, and stuff like that. And then that multi-bracket can get mounted right here onto this plate. So you can see there's two plates here. You can remove this one if you want more clearance for uh, longer radiators, additional fans, and then you can remove this one completely if you want even more clearance for thicker rads, push-pull, stuff like that. Or you can leave this installed and mount the multi-bracket and uh, either a drive or your water cooling reservoir slash pump right there. Pretty cool. I, I guess while we're here, I should probably talk about some of the other features internally before it gets filled up. Like I said earlier, the layout here is very similar to the Define 7, uh, which is a good thing. There's a lot of flexibility here. So there's a, a dual sort of layout design where you can actually take this plate and move it up front. And then with 
these trays, you can mount uh, three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. I think you can do like eight of them, like eight of them, boom, 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 like right, right here against this wall, or I guess behind the wall. You've also got a drive cage. Well, we'll get to the drive cage, but there's two more drive trays underneath the power supply shroud. Bear in mind that the case only comes included with four of these trays, but you can you can buy more separately if you really want to deck it out. Uh, I think the total number of drives that you can put in here simultaneously is like 17 or 18 drives. It's something crazy. So if you're trying to build a server, I would I would definitely consider this case just for that reason alone. But uh, you've also got two two and a half inch drive mounts right here that are pre-installed at the back behind the motherboard tray. You can relocate those, however, if you want to right here on top of the, the PSU shroud. And you can also buy additional additional trays. So if you wanted to have four, four of those SSD trays, you could have two here, two in the back all at the same time. Tons of options. Another cool thing you can do with uh, with this multi-bracket, um, apart from you know mounting a drive right behind here, you can also put it at the top like you can mount it to this thing, I think. So like you can actually have two more drives, boom, boom. If you wanted to put like two, three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives at the top of your case, which is kind of an unconventional spot for it, but hey, if it works and you need it, that's an option as well. Or you can put a multi-bracket at the bottom of the case in between the PSU and the existing drive tray if you wanted to add an additional drive right down there. So that's how you get so many drives to fit inside of this mid tower. Just bear in mind that you'll need, uh, you'll need to buy additional trays and multi-brackets and stuff if you really wanna uh, use it to its fullest in that, in that capacity. Um, but right out of the box with four of these trays and two SSD trays along with the drive cage I think you can mount up to like nine nine drives in here So, you know, you can mix and match two and a half inch and three and a half inch and stuff So yeah, there's there's just a ton of ton of storage if you want Okay, let's get the fans installed get the fans on the radiator get the radiator installed install the motherboard and carry on Okay, motherboard's going down. And there is a raised standoff in the center, which is always nice. Helps you align the motherboard right right up there to the IO shield, which is uh, pre-installed on this motherboard. Of course, the rest of the motherboard standoffs are also pre-installed. So we're just zipping right along here. I'm not even gonna install all the screws. I'm just gonna do like four or five. Okay, motherboard installed. I guess it's worth noting that we've got some nice rubber grommets here that go pretty much all up and down uh, the side of the motherboard. There's also a rubber grommet on the power supply shroud uh, that's kind of at the bottom right of the board where your front panel connectors would most likely be. And then another cutout that's not grommeted, but it's just a small cutout for like HD audio and stuff. Oh yeah, this board is ATX, but this case actually supports up to EATX, uh, I think up to 285 millimeters wide uh, for the motherboard. So that's pretty handy. We're moving some fans. Oops. Oh yeah. <laughs> These. Oh, nice. These are these are toolless. I, I like the fact that these are toolless. Completely easy to pop off. That's that's nice. Radiator installed. All right, went in pretty easy. Uh, the nice thing about the Meshify, well, I guess depending on who you ask, uh, personal preference and tastes, um, you do get to see the uh, any lighting. If you have RGB fans at the front here, you will see that lighting straight through the front panel because it is all mesh. And it'll probably look even brighter if you choose to remove the dust filter. Um, but uh, yeah, so we got three fans here. It's looking good. Okay, good and bad really quick. So the good thing, one good thing I like about this system is that these uh, these panels, you can see I, I only had to remove the small one. I, I can still leave the, the big one intact, which, uh, which is nice because it cleans it up and stuff. But what I was gonna say is I really like the fact that these are toolless. You probably shouldn't undo it like that, but um, but they are completely toolless, which is nice. Pops right back in super easily. The bad, not super bad, but just a little bit an inconvenience is the routing holes. The routing holes where you route your fan cables through at the front here are very small. It's kind of hard to show you guys, but sort of see they, they route behind, actually behind the frame and then through this other part here. So they're, they're just small holes. You know, they, they could be a little bit bigger. I had to fish around for a while uh, more than I would have liked to. But apart from that, everything's looking smooth so far. Next up, power supply. We do have have a Cooler Master V750 fully modular unit, and uh, we do have some custom sleeved cables as well, which we'll throw on at the very end. Cooler Master, let's do this. Uh, so let's actually go around here. Okay, so 
I guess it's a good time to talk about the backside. Don't mind the crazy cables coming off of our fans and stuff. Um, but uh, okay, where do we begin? So obviously we've got this modular panel here, this tray that can, again, move forward, and then you can slot in a ridiculous number of these, these drives. I think it goes like this, actually. We'll go up and down. I'm not gonna do all that right now because you guys have already seen the Define 7. You know how that works for the most part. Um, but uh, yeah, you also have a multi-bracket here. You can pop around in other locations, as we mentioned. There is also Velcro straps with these cable channels, these plastic cable channels uh, that I think I first saw these plastic channels being used on like NZXT cases, and then other brands have started to use them. Um, I am on the fence about them. I feel like they often, for me, get in the way more than they actually help. What would be helpful is if, I don't know how manufacturers would do this, but if there were just like, if these were modular and you, can move, you could move them, stick them anywhere you wanted. Because sometimes when I'm trying to route cables, these won't be in the perfect position that I need them to be in. So they'll be like a little too high or too low, which, you know, forces me to go up and around, or it's just, it's just a pain. It could be a, a pain in the ass. So what I would suggest to manufacturers is you can keep this design, but make it more flexible. Instead of just having them fixed in these positions, I don't know if you could just like, you know, move them, move them wherever you want. You'd have to have like a grid of, of holes and stuff on the motherboard tray, but your motherboard would be covering it up anyway. So theoretically it's possible, um, but uh, that's just, that's just how I feel about them. That being said, the Velcro straps do seem pretty sturdy. They're not super cheap or anything. Up top, you may have noticed we've got a fan controller here. So there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, three pin fan headers right there. And then you've got three, four pin PWM fan headers. And then, and then of course we've got SATA power. Thank God it's not Molex. So that's that's gonna power it. And then you've got one more cable uh, that's gonna connect to your motherboard, a, uh, a system fan header on Yamobo. And uh, and, that, and that's pretty sweet. So we can actually wire up some of our fans uh, to this, this controller today. That, that'll be handy. We also have this thing, this kind of weird, is this on the Define 7? If it was, I don't remember. I actually didn't even do a Define 7 review. So that's probably why I'm not sure but there's this weird thing. It's just a cable cover. I don't know why. Uh, it doesn't make too much sense to me because this side panel isn't glass. It's just a regular, well, you can't see it over there, but it's just a regular side panel. You can't see through it. So why is this necessary? I don't know. Is this just for like really, really anal people who just need to know that every single cable is tucked away as best as possible? I'm not sure. I probably won't use it. I think it's I kind of think it's annoying. But here's a look at our drive cage. Two trays right there. These are the same trays, I believe, as, uh, that's not it, as these ones. So you've got four of these, or you've got six in total. Two of them are pre-installed at this cage, which can be removed completely, or you can slide it over to the right or left, depending on how much clearance you want for radiators, or your power supply, a drive right here in the middle on a multi-bracket and stuff like that. Uh, let's install the PSU. I think we, we pretty much covered the back here. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about the top, fill port. If you wanted to add a fill port, there's a little cut out there. So it uh, just makes hopping off your loop or just filling it completely much easier. All right, power supply time. All right, 20-ish minutes later, I have finished all the cable management on this side of the case. And I gotta say, it's uh, it's working pretty good. It's working for me. I think uh, the Meshify 2 here does a pretty good job of cutting all the cables. There's uh, lots of tie-down points. Well, Velcro straps, I should say. There's no actual tie-down points in the traditional sense, uh, but you do have Velcro straps. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, how sometimes these things aren't optimally placed. For example, I, this, this connector is obviously not gonna be able to fit in these channels. So I kind of had to just detour it around it. Um, otherwise, uh, if, if it went on top, the side panel wouldn't uh, close. It would just be popping out too much. So it's stuff like that. Like if I could have just shifted this, like put these on rails, you know? Ooh, that's a good idea. Ugh, all you case makers are getting these free ideas. Golden ideas, just, just put them on rails so that we can just slide them wherever we want. And then even, even better if we could even articulate them counterclockwise or clockwise. If you could like rotate them a little bit, cause like I could have, I could have probably used a little bit of rotation on this one. Like I would have put this one a little higher and be rotated it like 30 degrees just because this is kind of coming at an angle. Like just that level of granularity uh, would be, would be nice to see because I feel like cable management on cases has pretty much gone on change for a long time. There hasn't really been a lot of 
of innovation there. Um, these channels were a cool idea at first, and now I think it's time that uh, we move them forward in, in some ways. So, uh, but apart from that, plenty of space underneath the power supply shroud for all of your excess cables. So that just makes things so much easier and, and tidy, not, not necessarily tidy down here, but it makes the rest of it look really nice. And you can just kind of tell it looks fairly clean back here, despite having what, five connected RGB fans. Like there's just, and there's two wires coming off of each of those fans. So we got 10 fan cables, uh, you know, a bunch of RGB stuff. And still we managed to, to clean it up nicely. It doesn't look super cluttered or anything. I did have to spend a little bit of time, but uh, a little bit of time goes a long way. And we are pretty much ready for the last component of the build, which is our graphics card. This bad boy out of here. This is the MSI RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio, and it is lovely. It is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's a really attractive card. If you guys remember, I also bet my RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio on a game of beer pong with my cousin and uh, agreed to give it to him in full if he beat me at the game. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'm just gonna shamelessly plug it because it's an awesome video. Go check it out. Um, but uh, why don't we go ahead and install this guy? Before we do, I wanted to point out a couple things about the graphics card area and stuff. Okay. I'm gonna have one really buff arm and one super weak arm. All right, so um, what I was gonna say here is that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven expansion slots going horizontally. And then you also have two more vertical. So you can actually mount this, uh, mount GPUs vertically in this case, although you will need to buy a sold separately adapter bracket uh, riser cable is what is the word I'm looking for. Riser cable, ribbon cable, whatever. Uh, that's gonna need to be purchased separately and that'll allow you to boop, mount your GPU just like that. Now, depending on your graphics card, it is gonna get those fans a little bit closer to that tempered glass side panel than, than you're probably comfortable with. But don't fear, there's also this fractal design Design now makes their own vertical riser bracket. Cable Mod has one very similar to this, uh, but basically what this does is it pretty much fills all of your horizontal expansion slots and puts the uh, the actual PCIe slot right smack, more or less right smack in the middle of your case. So it does push the graphics card back a little bit. Oh, these tubes are in the way. It does push the graphics card back further into your case so that your fans aren't pressed up against the panel, your side panel, um, which is obviously uh, not good. So uh, we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna install it horizontally. Um, I don't I wanna have to deal, I don't wanna have to open another box. I'm ready for this build to be done, as fun as it is. Uh, I, I just wanna see it in action. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this guy and bear in mind, we have plenty of clearance for giant graphics cards in the case's current configuration. But if we wanted to install a bunch of drives and we wanted to pop this panel and bring it to the front and have a bunch of drive trays, that would significantly reduce the amount of GPU clearance you have. And I don't think this GPU would actually make it. It's not, not, quite, not quite gonna fit there. But uh, without it, you know, in the current configuration, you've got room for days. I can't imagine there's a, a modern day GPU that wouldn't fit in the case in its current configuration, even with a radiator and fans at the front. So let's go ahead and get this installed and finish off this build. All right, the build's done and it's looking good, but before I show you the inside of it, I wanted to configure all of the LEDs to be pink first. Um, I, don't want, I don't want you to see all the unicorn vomit, it's shameful. But before I can do that, I need to obviously boot the system, get into Windows and change all the settings there. But I can't do that because this motherboard needs a BIOS update in order for it to support the Zen 3 uh, Ryzen 5000 series processor. So thank the Lords of Asus that they included a BIOS flashback feature on this board. Otherwise I would have had to swap out the CPU for an older generation generation chip and then I would have had to do the BIOS update that way. So this is saving me a ton of time. All I got to do now is go to the product page, click on support. This is a quick little mini tutorial, I suppose. And then uh, just update your BIOS. BIOS and firmware. There it is. And uh oh, nothing here. Oh God, no. Don't tell me the BIOS isn't here or ready. Hold on, hold on, fresh. Oh God, oh thank God. Okay, so if your BIOS isn't showing up on an ACS product page, a support page, just hit F5 and that seems to fix it. So here we go, here we go. This is the one that you want. This is a GESA, a GESA, a GESA, whatever. Uh, e or what is it? 1.1.0.0. I think it needs to be that or newer in order for it to add support for Zen 3. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that and we should be BIOS flashbacking in just a bit. 
it. All right, into the port you go, and I think we just hold this down. Oh, I see a light. See a light blinking. That means it's working, I think. Okay, we'll be right back. Hopefully it works. All right, the light turned off, so I think it finished. Let's try it out. It goes nothing. Please give me a sign. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This isn't looking good. Fans are definitely working. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right, cool. All right, so uh, it looks like we'll be able to get into Windows just fine at this point, and we'll circle back once all the LEDs are configured. It should look pretty sweet. Oh, there it goes. It's good. It's going, it's going. Okay, be right back. All right, so I tried configuring the RGB lights to be all pink, because that's, you know, the theme I was going for. And then I was just reminded how freaking garbage RGB is in, in, in PCs. Like the PC implementation for RGB is still hot garbage. I tried for like an hour, guys, to get everything pink, which sounds like such an easy thing to do. It should be a simple task, but it was not. And I'm just gonna show you the build in all of its unicorn vomit glory, because I gave up on trying to make it all pink. I'll briefly explain. What, what I was going through, but you, you, you've heard it all before. You've heard it all before. When you have like conflicting brands, like different brands, you know, it's not all cohesive, it's all spread out. You've got different applications that you have to use for each component and that can cause conflicts. And sometimes things just don't work. It's all funky. It's all a mess. It's all a mess. So I have like Corsair IQ. That was the only application that was somewhat working. That was working for the uh, for the DDR4 memory there. And then I had Asus Aura Sync, which is now apparently integrated with uh, the Armory Crate thing, which is stupid. I always try to avoid installing that, and then I actually had to. That didn't even friggin' work. So like the, the AIO, the fractal AIO, and the fans, well, the fans are connected to the actual uh, fan and RGB hub that's integrated with the radiator, and then there's a cable that goes from the, the water block all the way to the uh, five, five volt addressable RGB header on the motherboard. So it's an Asus motherboard, you'd think, okay, Asus or a sync, just tell that header to change colors. That didn't work, nothing worked, nothing. It didn't, like, there was no response whatsoever. So I don't know, I don't know, I, you know, I, I tend to think like, oh, it's user error. I'm just messing up, I'm an idiot, which is true. But no, this time, like it just wasn't working. Nothing was working. Dragon Center, MSI Dragon Center, useless. I, I didn't even see a lighting section. There was no, no lighting area. I tried to download Mystic Light, that didn't work. So I don't know if they just don't have support yet for RTX 30 series or what, but I wasn't getting anywhere. So I, I gave up and here's the build. I don't know why I'm so angry. Well, I, I, I know why I'm angry, but I shouldn't be at the same time because it, it still turned out to be a very nice looking, lovely PC. Uh, and you can can definitely see all the lighting right through the front panel there. I did remove the front dust filter so you can see the lighting a bit better and it's getting more airflow. And there's definitely air moving through the system. It feels feels pretty cool in here. I mean, it's definitely a little bit warmer now that we have Far Cry 5 running up. Uh, more on that in a sec. But um, yeah, I just want to quickly say that this is a really, really awesome case. You know, I feel conflicted about it at the same time because it's more or less a Define 7 with a couple tweaks, right? It's not exactly a Define 7, but a lot of similarities, a lot of the same DNA, which is good in a way because, you you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But at a certain point, you kind of want to see a company change things up a little bit. And I think we've been wanting that from Fractal for a long time. They did that with the Define 7. So that was good. That was a real leap forward, I think. But now it's like they're just kind of copying that same layout with their other cases, like the Meshify 2. So I think they have a little bit of time. They can still rehash it a few more times since the Define 7 is fairly new. But at some point, I, I don't want them to keep this layout for as long as they did with the previous Define series, right? They just kept rehashing it, beating the dead horse. So. Uh, uh, but that said, it's still a really lovely case. It's it's very premium, quite high end, definitely a lot more uh, features and flexibility than your OG Meshify, that's for sure. And uh, cable management, not too shabby. You know, I didn't spend a whole lot of time, but it looks fairly tidy, so that's good. I'm still not a huge fan of these plastic channels. I'll have to do something about that, but uh, just tons of mounting support for radiators and drives. Um, so, you know, really depending on what you want to do, this thing can handle more or less anything you throw at it. And there were a couple nitpicky things that I had here here and there about the case. You know, it's no case is perfect, but overall nothing was a, a deal breaker. And I'd say that uh, if you're in the market for a, a fairly premium case with lots of airflow, this is uh, definitely worth your consideration. But before I sign off, I just wanted to quickly show you guys a little demo here, Far Cry 5. We are at 2560 by 1440. Ultra settings, completely maxed out graphically. And fraps counter is a little small, but you can see we're getting around 130, 140 FPS. Yeah, that's what a, an RTX 3070 and a Zen 3 processor will get you right now. So pretty awesome, pretty awesome performance. Honestly, it's uh, very impressive. Let me go ahead and switch it over to 4K, just for shiz and giggles. And we are still getting a very respectable 70, 80 FPS. Yes, well above 60. Running at 4K, max settings and a AAA title. Oh, this is nice. Oh, it's so nice. The only thing that could make it nicer is if the lights were pink, but 
Can't have everything, I guess. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, toss a like before you go and get subscribed for more tech content on the way. We've got a lot more coming soon. Some fun projects coming right up. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.